Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. It is an honor and a privilege uh, to be here and to be part of what has been such a, a rich and I think really important discussion that we've all been having. And as we just listened to a, uh, learned about a very important problem to solve here in South Florida and around the world, we're going to have a conversation over the next 10 minutes, so a very quick one. Um, about efforts here in Miami and in other places to build a community of problem solvers, to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem here in Miami and in other places um, where, where people can solve the ideas that are, that are important to them. And around the world, we're seeing um, mayors and city governments try and create centers of innovation in, in their own communities. Um, and so here to talk about it, we have Leandro, the effort, here to talk about the efforts here in Miami, we have Leandro Fanol of the Idea Center at Miami Day College and, and Laura Maidan with Endeavor Miami. And Laura, I want to start with you in, in terms of thinking about creating you know, an ecosystem, a, a place that has the resources where people can solve the, 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 the problems that are important to them. Endeavor is something that is in some, some 25 countries around the world. Uh, until three years ago, had never operated in the US um, and then decided to make Miami its very first city where it launched and now it's expanded actually to Detroit and Louisville and looking to expand across the US while continuing its international expansion. Talk about sort of Endeavor's particular take on sort of striving and spurring entrepreneurship and what sort of its unique differentiators are. Thank you. And thanks for having us here this afternoon. Um, so Endeavor is the only global organization that really focuses on selecting entrepreneurs that are at the scale of uh, phase. That means that the entrepreneurs are past startup, they already have traction and ongoing businesses, and what we help them with is to, to grow and to accelerate that growth. So that's the first thing. The second is that once these endeavor entrepreneurs are selected, we focus on giving them access to resources that normally they wouldn't have in an emerging ecosystem. So this is access to mentors, and we make those connections, and we're very fortunate to attract you know, world-class business leaders, entrepreneurs, and investors that help with don and donate mentor hours to them uh, to help them with their growth. And then also we give them access to capital by introductions to investors if they're raising money. And we also give them access to talent and some training programs and some services with partners that we have in the community and globally that support that growth. So scale-ups, not startups, and then just sort of network effect writ large, not only within a community, but then sort of networking across mentors, across endeavors, some 25 countries that it's operating in around the world. That's correct. Yeah. In every, uh, we operate independently and we focus locally at each affiliate. So in Dover, Miami, we're looking for entrepreneurs in South Florida. However, we have access to the services of the global network. Now, Leandro, as we think about sort of creating centers of innovation, um, you know, Inclusiveness is, is a really in part of this discussion. We see you know, a big issue in our primary centers of innovation world right now is the lack of inclusiveness. As Miami is now in the very early stages of trying to build its entrepreneur, its innovation ecosystem, how is Miami Dade College trying to sort of to, to not only drive entrepreneurship but inclusiveness too? Hola, <clears throat> I think it is a fundamental question and well, top universities uh, are very proud of uh, what percentage of students they reject. And the more they reject, the higher the rankings uh, go. Uh, we're very proud of the opposite. We give everybody a shot, uh, an opportunity to be part of the, the innovation ecosystem. So unlike Silicon Valley, we're trying to build a, an ecosystem that works for everybody. And we're very proud of being part of these efforts. So, and maybe it's worth just giving sort of a little more background about Miami Dade College. This is the largest and the most diverse campus-based college in the country, in the United States. So it's actually some 160,000 students. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, in terms of uh, socioeconomics, it's over half the students that actually come from low-income households. Over 70%. Over 70%, yeah. pardon me. So talk, in terms of the Idea Center, sort of taking this really unique student population, mm -hmm. right, that you're open to so many, what are the ways in which you're trying to, to stir and drive innovation? Yeah. So we have a impact through many different initiatives. First of all is through inspiration. So over 5,000 of our students have access to talks from pioneers uh, like the CEO of Uber, Travis Kalanick, so they can ask questions directly. And we cannot underestimate the importance of, of being inspired 
and having someone that you uh, want to look after. The second, we have a, a suite of programs building 21st century skills with partnerships with universities like Harvard, Stanford, and because Miami is a global city, also with Tel Aviv University, and now with Cienfuegos in Cuba, which I just... In fact, Leandro was just in Cuba last week, actually working with entrepreneurs there. It was a lot of fun. So in the my, I, I bet it was. In fact, we <laughs> need a lot more than 10 minutes, I think, to, to talk about what that trip yes. was like. And we look forward at another forum to talking about that trip. So in the, in the Miami context, efforts around building an innovation ecosystem go back about you know, four years. It's, it's pretty recent. Many other cities have been at it a lot longer. Um, but I guess you know, I, a question I have is sort of, well, why, why bother, right? We have these centers of innovation already in the world that are developing you know, big ideas. We listened to Mayor Bloomberg this morning talking about how technology over the, the next, there'll be more new t uh, uh, technological innovations over the next five years than we've seen in all previous history. And we have these places doing it. Why should we think about building innovation ecosystems in other communities like Miami or other cities around the world? So um, at the core of Endeavor's mission actually is to really foster economic development locally outside and Endeavor started in emerging markets and as Matt mentioned, we're the first U.S. affiliate, which means that we really think it's important for the communities with their own characteristics to drive innovation and change on their own, right, and to create jobs on their own as opposed to pulling everybody or outside their, their local ecosystem for innovation. And, you know, in, at Endeavor, we hope that our Endeavor entrepreneurs, and that's our me one of our measures of success, have a multiplier effect. So we hope that by these entrepreneurs becoming successful and creating jobs, others will be inspired to do it and create that uh, virtual circle in the economy. The yeah, I would like to add that uh, it's also because we have no other choice, right? right? Every company is a tech company and traditional industries like uh, retail or taxi services or hotels are being disrupted by innovative companies. So whether you want it or not, your company or your organization is a tech company. So I would add to, uh, we have to add that innovation, innovate or die, basically, it should be our, our, our lemma. And as we think about an entrepreneur or an innovator, I mean, is it, so often it seems like this, so the discussion can be around economic development, but it's now sort of more about creating problem solvers generally. And it's my question to you is sort of, are the lines getting really blurry? That is, as we think about entrepreneurship, it can be around government innovation. It can be around uh, social impact. I mean, Endeavor, in fact, is in some ways, you know, a very example of that being a, a 501c3 not-for-profit that's helping for-profit entrepreneurs, if either one of you wanted to speak to that. So I, I, I think that's correct. I think that, I mean, we are an example because we support for-profit being a non-profit, but also I'm looking, I'm seeing our entrepreneurs, I think the lines between uh, for-profit and social enterprise are getting blurred. Being socially conscious is pretty much in everybody's mindset. And I have examples of entrepreneurs that have now B Corps where they're either, either through the, these B Corps building uh, partnerships with other governments or communities to either attract more talent, to reach uh, more resources to different communities. And these entrepreneurs are reaching outside and having an impact outside the U.S. as well. I would like to add that uh, we're very uh, close in touch with the pipeline, the student entrepreneurs. And I would say that ab about 30% of the, the student ventures have either a entirely social entrepreneurship angle or it's a for-profit venture with a social impact in mind. So I think that's very encouraging. I think we do have a, an upside and an opportunity to embrace and to bring the government more. But we're building uh, the ecosystem as we speak, so I'm very uh, optimistic about the future. So the efforts in Miami are still early days, just yeah. a few years in. Endeavor, is three, Endeavor Miami is three years old. The Idea Center at Miami Day College is two years old. But in, as we look at the clock counting at 40 seconds, let's quickly talk about impact. What are the things we've seen in a short period of time? I think one of the biggest impacts I see in terms of collaboration. So a student that comes from uh, our coding program can be placed in an internship through another Knight Foundation grantee launch code, and then he or she can work for an Endeavor company. So, so that's a purpose of an work. ecosystem at work, a synergies, and that's very encouraging. And I echo that. We believe that collaborating with different stakeholders is key. Nobody has one, no, not one organization can change, and we're always collaborating. Our entrepreneurs are helping other 
institutions as well. And right on the dot, 10 minutes. Oh, Thank perfect. you all very much. Not even the briefing. <laughs>